What is up guys? Welcome back to another episode here on Above Average. If you're new to the channel, thanks for clicking on this video. And today we will be asking the question that so many of you Oilers fans are asking, do the Oilers have the best top six in the entire NHL? Well, we're going to go through like some of the best top six in the NHL. Um, if I didn't include your team, I'm sorry. Uh, I included, I think, well, I included and I kind of just wanted to talk about like 20. I think I picked 20 of uh, the other teams in the NHL and we're going to we're going to rate um, and we're going to rank, I guess, how, how do those top six as compared to the Edmonton Oilers and do the Oilers uh, they very well could have the best top six but um there's there's a few that I think there's like four where I'm like okay like super serious so uh with that out of the way guys uh let's 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 hop right into this video I got 20 teams to talk about so let's uh let's get this on the road um also if uh if you think I'm silly you think I'm a goof you don't agree with any of my takes feel free to drop a comment down in the comment section below and uh I'd like to I'd like to read it for sure um as well as I pulled these from dailyfaceoff.com. So if uh, you ever, if you're ever curious on, oh, like what's uh, what's my team's uh, lineup looking for tonight's game, definitely go to dailyfaceoff.com and uh, check it out. They're they're super accurate. Every morning they'll change it, they'll change it, they'll change it. So super up to date. It's great. And this is not a sponsored segment. I just wanted to say thank you for providing these awesome graphics. So. With that out of the way, guys, let's let's de dive deep. Let's dive deep into the depths of the, the Oilers' top six and see how they rank compared to other teams. Okay, right out of the gate, let's uh, do this as alphabetically as possible. Um, we're, ta we're talking about the Boston Bruins. Obviously, without uh, without Patrice Bergeron and David Krejci, it's looking a little thin there. But, um, you know, having Brad Marchand and David uh, Pasternak definitely helps out your case. Uh, JVR, you know, he's not JVR of old, but uh, you got Charlie Coyle. Ideally, I think Charlie Coyle is a little bit more of a third-line center. He hasn't really panned out uh, for Boston, I'm sure, as, as they had hoped. Um, Jake Dabrowski, you know, he's a solid player for sure. But, yeah, Pablo Zeka for your first-line center, that ain't cutting it. Uh, so, yeah, the Oilers, I, I think, you know, and that's another thing. I'm going to try and be as unbiased as possible. Um, I'm just a hockey fan right now, and I'm just going to be giving you my thoughts on an uh, outsider's perspective. Uh, you know, I'm not picking, obviously, Oilers are my team, but I'm just going to look at you know, the players. I'm looking at the players. I got a really good understanding for all these players. So um, no bias. I'm not trying to be biased here. Anyway, next up, we've got the Buffalo freaking Sabres, man. The Buffalo Sabres, ho, ho, ho. they could honestly do it next year. They could actually freaking make the playoffs. So here's hoping because, uh, yeah, man, I've been rooting for them. I, I love Tage Thompson. Absolute beauty. Alex Tuck, like one of just a really good all-round complete player. He can skate, great shot, filthy hands, man. He, he's kind of like Tage Thompson. They work so well to, uh, together, uh, two righties. And then obviously Jeff Skinner, who's kind of been like, just what a weird career he's had. Um, you got John Jason Paterka, Dylan Cousins, and Victor Olof Olofsson. Um, so, you know... Dylan Cousins, he's on, he's well on his way to be, uh, you know, making his name, you know, uh, pe people are going to begin to know who Dylan Cousins is, and uh, that's awesome, good old Canadian boy, um, yeah, this top six definitely is, is gotten so good, and it's only going to get better, G uh, Jack Quinn, I'm surprised he's not, uh, you know, they don't have him projected as being in their top six, but he's going to be there, if not at the beginning of the year, uh, by the end, for sure, Jack Quinn's an absolute stud, so next up, uh, oh yeah, I should say that, I, I still do take the Oilers slightly over I, th I think their top six is a little bit better um okay so next up you got the Calgary Flames I figured I'd talk about the Flames I got a lot of Flames viewers and uh okay it's not bad Calgary it's honestly you know you just got rid of Tyler Toffoli and you know it's not too bad the only thing you know Dylan Dubé the first line left winger you know they need like a they need like a like a like a, a playmaking like a you know a, a really good creative thinking left winger you know with smil smooth silky hands someone who can just make plays out of nothing good skater you know might be on on the smaller side but they need like a like a, a Patrick Kane but like smaller uh, on the left wing I think that would really help them out and then man Andre Andrew Mangiapane on your first line right. They need like a they need like a tough like a, a grinder forward you know someone who who can score put up massive points but who's not afraid to you know get in the opposition's face like that would be huge if they could get like a, a dangler playmaker on the left wing and then like a gritty you know goal scorer who can also make plays um, on the right side I think that would be huge. 
sorry. Yeah, you can suck at Calgary. You guys have been roasting me a lot lately, so I've been really nice to you guys. I've been very nice, and you know, I'm gonna take some shots back at you, so how do you like that one? Obviously, okay, I'm sorry, Grandma. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. My Grandma, she watches the show, though she watches the show, and uh, Grandma, I've just been getting roasted, so I just wanted to roast the Flames fans back. But, I, well, that was that was uncalled for. I'm sorry about that. Um, in all seriousness, Dylan Dubé, absolute stud. I think, you know, I'll never not like him for his goaded celly that he did. I think it was against the Oilers too, the, the mean mug. Uh, that, that, dude, I'll, if I can find it, I'll roll it. It's one of the best cellies ever. Um, Elias Lindholm, you know what? He Can he be a first line center? Yes, but I think he also, he's like a complimentary first first line center. He needs people he can play with. He needs the Gaudreaux, the Kachucks, right? Um, yeah, if he's a complimentary player, man, Elias Lindholm's a stud, like uh, just unreal. And I don't think it's Andrew Mangiapane, and I definitely don't think it's Dylan Dubé either. Um, and, it, and it wasn't Jonathan Huberto, which was too bad because I thought they would have meshed well. Obviously, Huberto having Huberto in your top six, and I'm not giving up on this player. You know, if next year he has another down year, I think then it's really time to worry. But you know, you have to put in perspective. It was his first year, first team, for a first new team, you know, the coach he didn't necessarily like and a coach that didn't really let him do what he wanted to. So Jonathan Huberto, I think, will be back. And if he is, like, this is a good top six. You got Nazem Kadri, who's, you know, a stud in his own right. He can be. Um, plays with, you know, he's a little bit of a dummy sometimes, but ah, whatever. Every team has one of them. And then Jacob Pelche, really good skater. He's... I could see him panning out like really well for the Calgary Flames. So honestly, I'm taking the Oilers top six for sure over Calgary's. But uh, Calgary fans, uh, like I, I don't think you should be as disappointed. Like it's still this top six isn't the worst. It's not the best, but it can win you a game every now and then. So not bad. Okay. Next up, I kind of wanted to talk about Carolina. Um, I, I honestly think they've got one of the most overrated uh, top six in the entire NHL. Some people are going to roast me. And feel free to drop a comment down below. I'd love to hear it. This is just my opinion. Svechnikov, you, you know, he's you always expect more. He's like, oh, like, oh he's going to do this. He's just going to pop off this year. But he never does. He doesn't go back either. He's kind of just like this. He's kind of just idle. He's just consistently been like this. So, but he's an Oilers killer. The two games he played Edmonton. He got two hat tricks. So, uh, Jesper Kakaniemi. I mean, I think he's overrated. I, I think he's. I think he, there's nothing special in him. You know, sorry, not sorry. I said it. Whatever. Martin Uh Not bad. I, I think he's pretty good. He, he, you know, he's not bad. I'll give it that. The one player I really, really freaking love is Seth Jarvis. I wanted the Oilers to pick him uh, back in 2020, and uh, he was picked right before we picked uh, Dylan Holloway. So, uh, you win some, you lose some. He's going to be a stud for sure. Sebastian Ajo, obviously I like him. I know what he does, and he's unreal. And then Tara Vinen, good complimentary player, but I think he's a little overhyped. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I think it's pretty fair to say the Oilers have a way, way better. Well, maybe not way, way better, but... They definitely have a better top six. Uh, that's just my opinion, or that's just what I'm, uh, that's what I think, at least. So, uh, Carolina fans, let me hear it. In the comment section below, I could not talk about uh, Chicago's top six here, boys and girls. Uh, Taylor Hall, Connor Bedard, Lucas Reichel. Obviously, Reichel, he's, he's, you know, that's probably not the player you want there for sure, but Connor Bedard, there, get ready, kid. You're on the <laughs> you're our first line center. Holy heck, how you doing? Um, but he's going to be playing along Taylor Hall. I'm going to be, uh, I was just thinking it last night. I'm going to be watching so many Chicago Blackhawks games. And uh, can't wait, man. Can't wait to see what those two do. Um, just Connor Bedard in his own right, what he's able to do. It's, it's going to be fun to see. Uh, Andreas Athanasio, I think this guy is a really good player. Uh, just depends on the team. And I think uh, Chicago is a team for him to be really good on. Tyler Johnson and Taylor Radish. You know, I guess it's kind of nice that they got Tyler Johnson. Um, Taylor Radish, you know, he's still a uh, you know, project, if you will. So it's not the best, <laughs> you know, and it's not, they just got last place this year, right? That's a, there's a reason they got Bedard. It's because we know they, their top six is very thin, but give it a few years, um, whether it's drafting and development, whether it's signing and trading, you're going to have an unreal top six Chicago. So Blackhawks fans, get ready. Um, okay, this is, I think, our first contender uh, first real contender, Colorado Avalanche. Okay, Avalanche fans, I, I'd love to hear it. What do you What do you think? Who, who has a, you know, I'm just looking at it. You know, Zach Hyman, Jonathan Drouin, who would you rather have? You know, Zach Hyman had the better year last year, but potential man, Jonathan Drouin was a third overall pick. I think he's an absolute stud. I wanted to do this video. I recorded it, but I never got it out in time. I wanted to do a one-year, you know, show-me deal uh, with Jonathan Drouin. 
uh, and then, you know, he ended up getting it just with Colorado. So it's kind of interesting how that works out. I think he just really needs, um, you know, a fresh new start. And um, it's, he's reunited with Nathan McKinnon. Like, it's it's going to be sick, man. He's so good. Jonathan Drew, I think there really is still a player in him. I just, for whatever reason, it just didn't work out in Montreal. And it hasn't worked out yet. Um, but he didn't have bad numbers last year. He only got two goals, I think, but he put up, you know, really good assists. Like, and he he did he did okay. He did okay. So, he's gonna be feeding he's gonna be feeding Nate Dog um, or Miko Rantanen. I think that's a great first line. Obviously, you got Arturi Lekkinen, Ryan Johansson. It's gonna be super interesting to see how he pans out in uh, Colorado's system, and then Valeri Nichushkin, uh, Nichushkin that is. So, yeah, I mean, uh, cancel each other out. I think you know Hyman might have had the better you know he might be the better player mcdavid and mckinnon obviously mcdavid's got the slight edge there connor brown miko rantanen okay rantanen's better for sure than connor brown and then nuge and arturi lekkinen 100 point player versus uh what like a 60 50 point player you're gonna take the 100 point player people are gonna say oh you just go to all in the playoffs or in the power play whatever it's still 100 points you take them <laughs> take them how you can whatever uh, Leon Dreisso, Ryan Johansson, obviously Leo is definitely better, and then Nichushkin or Vander Kane. You make an argument for both players. Uh, obviously, I like Kane. I think he's got a great shot. So does Valerie, though. And they're both they're both big guys, but they, they both can fight. Um, yeah, so the, that that one's kind of a toss up. But uh, I'll leave it to you guys because if I say that the Oilers have a better top six, I'm gonna get comments, uh, roast comments. So you guys can decide on that. Um, who has the better top six, the Oilers or Apps? Let me know. Or hash it out in the comment section down below. Whatever. Okay, we're at 12 minutes. Okay, I got I got truck through this. Okay, there's we're we're doing good. We're on progress. Okay, next up, Dallas Stars. Jason Robertson, Rupe Hintz, Joe Pavelski, Dadanov, Wyatt Johnson, and Jamie Ben. I really like their first line. Joe Pavelski, the ageless wonders, just a stud. Rupe Hintz, just a real good skater. Great shot too. Jason Robertson, talk about great shots. Yeah, he's going to be lighting the lamp for many years to come. Um, obviously, Jamie Benn had kind of a rebound or bounce back year, which is good to see. My favorite player, uh, Wyatt Johnson, up and comer. I mean, up and comer, he does you know he does everything right. He's he's they got a really good player in him, and uh, you know they're deep when Tyler Sagan's not in the second line center, and then they also got Matt Duchesne. So who knows? That's probably interchangeable. It might happen. It might not. And then Dadanov, you know, yeah, they have, they even have Duchesne on the right slot now. So Duchesne playing on the second line could be very, like, they just have so many options. Um, I really like their top six. I think, I, I still think I'm taking the Oilers top six over, but I mean, it, it's close. It is pretty close. As Stars fans, if there's any watching, let me know in the comment section below. Okay, next up, the Florida Panthers. <sighs> Sorry, I'm kind of just really hurrying here. Um, you got Evan Rodriguez, uh, breakout year, uh, Sasha Barkov, you know, one of the best defensive forwards in the NHL, Sam Reinhardt, he's kind of, he's 50-50, some days he's good, some others he's not so good, Matthew Chuck coming off a career year, absolute beauty, um, heart finalist, just really, really good player, Sam Bennett, uh, just uh, two flames, two flames that just couldn't do it in Calgary, but uh, they're... They're, they're doing really good down south, and uh, that's good to see. And then Carter Verduhage, another career year. I'm pretty sure he had as well. So this top six is really intriguing. Um, I think they're just one player off, like maybe Reinhardt or Rodriguez, you know. I don't know. I just feel like they, they could use a little bit more help from being serious, like top six. But that being said, still really good top six. Like I, I just, if I was the GM, I'd be like, oh, like how can I make this bigger or better because like there's serious potential to have like just the best top six uh, honestly like it's it's that good i really like barkov and then kachuk what he's doing these days like it's just incredible so yeah i still think i'm going to take the Oilers top six over this and uh, uh they just didn't quite edge it out right they don't have a mcdavid i think is that the is that the ultimatum just having mcdavid and you put him on any one of these yeah it might be man it might be like if you have mcdavid swap mcdavid and kopitar out i'd probably put I'd probably put LA as top six the best, but um, yeah, this is scary. Uh, Oilers fans, you should be crapping your pants. The freaking Los Angeles Kings, they came to play this offseason, guys. Holy crap. Anze Kopitar, Quinn Byfield, Adrian Kempe. Kempe, I knew he was going to be a stud the second he came into the league. I just, I seen it. He's got that scary look, man. He's got that game face, man. Yeah, he's a game changer. Sick shot. Great skater. He's, he can, he's got hands. He's a big boy, too. 
Uh, he decked uh, freaking Leon a few times in this year's playoffs, so pretty solid, man. Then you got Kopitar, well-rounded, great all-around freaking first-line center. Yep, that's your boy. Quinn Byfield hasn't quite panned out. They have him slotted on the first slot, first line, left wing. So, you know, if he is that 80-point player, 90-point player that they want, man, just watch out because that's going to be insane. It makes this top six even better. And then obviously you got Kevin Fiala, uh, Pierre-Luc Dubois, and Arthur Kaliev as your second line. Uh, Dubois, I've always honestly thought a little overrated. I don't know. I, I just think he gets a bad rep. He will, and you get that in hockey. I don't know. He just, he hasn't liked wherever he's went in his career, whether that was Columbus or in Winnipeg. And, you know, he finally, he finally got his contract that he wanted. And so here's hoping that helps. I just, I think he's a pretty bland player. He's pretty basic, um, but he's physical. He's a good playoff player, but there's just nothing fancy with Pierre, you know, nothing fancy at all. Uh, I, like, I just, I never remember seeing a highlight reel goal or any goal for that matter since, and I watch, you know, Sports Center every morning, uh, go through all the games, and he just, I don't know, not a real impact player, but who knows, that could change, and I'm probably going to get roasted for that take, so let me hear it in the comments. Kevin Fiala, though, absolute stud. Arthur Kaliev, yeah, I just, uh, he's, he's great. He's a good, you know, he's a good complimentary player, but... Uh, I think they if they know that that's that's where their weak point is on the top six. But I man, I'm still thinking I'm taking. But it's like this. It's like this. The Oilers top six, LA. Okay. Next up, we've got New Jersey. Okay, this this might be legit. Like these, this is crazy. Nico Heischer, like the next coming of what? Like Anze Kop. Oh, excuse me, Anze Koptar. He has that presence, right? Like he's an all-round good, you know, forward. Timo Meyer kind of sucked balls as soon as he went to New Jersey, but. Um, you know, he just coming off a new contract here. He's just signed it. So, you know, his transition might be better next season. Here's hoping it is. And if it is, this top six could be the best in the NHL. Not even joking. You got the up and coming, you know, the likes of Dawson Mercer, who's just going to be a stud. Tyler Toffoli coming off a career year. The third line should be called the career line because they're all, all three of these players are coming off career years. You know, you have Jack Hughes as your second line center. That's going to be huge. Um, Jesper Brad as well, just a stud. He's kind of like Kempe. I don't know why. I, the first time the Oilers played New Jersey and I seen this Jesper Brad guy, I'm like, that guy's going to be a player for sure. It's just, you can tell. You really can. And it all starts with the skating. Um, the slick hands too. I'll leave it to you guys. What do you think in the comment section below? Do the, the do the New Jersey have the, do they dethrone the Edmonton Oilers as the top six Kings in the NHL? They might, man. They have a serious case. You can argue that for sure. Next up, we've got the New York Rangers. Okay, Chris Kreider, Mika Zibanejad, Capo Caco. Obviously, Caco hasn't quite panned out how they'd like. I'm sure. Then you got Blake Wheeler. Oh, I cannot wait to see what Wheeler does in New York, the big city. He goes from, uh, you know, the big city in Winnipeg to the big, big city in New York. So it's going to be a huge transition. You got Vinny Trocek on the second line center and then Artemi Panarin second line as well. I really like that second line. Oh, just Wheeler feeding Panarin all day. Oh, I can't wait. You know, it's not Wheeler of old, but I see he's still got it. He's still got it for sure. So, um... I might give the Oilers a slight edge, but it's not by much, man. And, you know, it's just because I don't know. I don't know how these guys are going to perform. I don't know how Wheeler, what, what happens, gets there. He just sucks. So that's why I say that, you know, very well could be. Next up, we got the Ottawa Senators. We got Brady Kachuk, Timmy Stu, and Claude Giroux. Uh, pretty solid first line. Timmy Stu, I remember this draft so well because it was, you know, the Lafreniere draft and... The Oilers just lost to Chicago. We had a chance to getting the first overall pick, but I didn't want Alexi. I wanted Timmy freaking Stu, the German connection. This guy just had a 90 point season, and uh, I knew he was gonna have. I knew he was gonna have a 90. Or no, it was 80 or 90. Either or, he was close to 90. If it wasn't, I think it was like just 90, like flat. Uh, I'm gonna look into that. Don't roast me because I know I might be wrong, but I might be right either. Or, or also. So, uh, Claude Giroux, you know, he, he still got it. Claude still got it. Uh, he was, uh, he was, he did just fine last year with, uh, Ottawa. Brady Kachuk, just like his brother, you know, you'd love to have him on your team. Hate to play him. Uh, stud. He's the captain. He's the guy. And he, he, he's a fighter, man. He's, he's a sick player. You, you want a player like Brady Kachuk on your team. So first line, I love, um, Dabrinkat, obviously. We don't know if he's going to be on their team next year. You got Josh Norris and Drake Batherson as well. So full season of uh, both those two, I'm pretty sure Drake Batherson was injured on and off. I know for sure Norris was. So I like that second line a lot. Really just all depends on what happens with Dabrinkit. You know, if they get, you know, just 
prospects or draft picks with that trade, then obviously this top six isn't nearly as good. But, um, you know, you keep to brink out or you trade for like a roster player who's going to make an impact on this top six. Yeah, like this is this is definitely a great top six and it's only getting better, which is a scary thought. So still going to give the slight edge to Edmonton, in my opinion. Uh, Ottawa fans, let me know. Steven Stamkos, Braden Point, Nikita Kucherov, they have as their first line. Uh, I don't think you ever really see that. They like to spread it out a little bit. But um, yeah, if that is set in stone, that's how they have their first line for the whole season. That's probably the best first line in all of hockey. Not even lying. Uh, yeah, Steven Stamkos stud, like Braden Point. Yeah, that's just unreal. But then it kind of dipped. Brandon Hagel, you know, he's like, I feel like he's really a third line player. Connor Sherry, you know, he's okay as well. Anthony Sorelli, so... This top six is super top heavy. Uh, I think you put Brandon Hagel, Braden Point, and Nikita Kucherov, and then Stamko, Sorelli, Shiri, or you have Shiri up and then Kucherov's playing with Sorelli. Or, uh, you can't stack the first line like that, I don't think, with uh, Tampa. Um, and for that reason, I'm giving the slight edge to Edmonton still. Okay, we got uh, five teams left if you made it this far. Thanks for watching this video. Uh, this is, okay, this is the first one. I'm Toronto Maple Leafs. Yep, you, you got it. I, I, I think the, the Maple Leafs, I, it pains me to say it, it pains me to say it. I think the Maple Leafs have the better top six. Oh, I love the acquisitions of Tyler Bertuzzi and Max Domi. I think that's perfect, man. Uh, yeah, but as of, as of right now, if this, if this is how it starts next season, I'm taking this top six. I think I am. I'm taking this top six over the Oilers, and it uh, pains me to say it, but, oh, man, I just, I can't wait to see what Bertuzzi and Matthews and Marner are able to do in the regular season next year, and Domi, finally back in the six, so, yeah, this is my first edge. Leafs fans, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Oilers fans, I'm sorry, don't get mad at me, but, um, and Oilers fans, if you disagree, you know, drop a comment down below. Okay, next up, I gotta talk about another, uh, we're going on the other side of the country, uh, Vancouver Canucks. Anthony Bavillier, uh, Elias Peterson, and uh, you got Andre Kuzmenko, who's I'm happy to see he's his KHL transition to the NHL was really really good. Um, he crushed it last year, and yeah, man, he, he's a stud. He's gonna be a really really good player. So first line is not bad, you know, Petey. Good old Petey, he's coming into his own um, first 100-point season, I believe, of his career last year. So that's awesome. G or no, he got 99. Didn't he get 99? I think he got 99. Because uh, I remember GT Miller got 99 the year before as well. And they were just so close to having a 100-point player, but not quite. So GT Miller, um, if he can bring his sass down to another level, that would be great. Brock Besser needs a huge bounce back here because he sucked so bad last year. And then uh, Ilya Mikheyev, nothing crazy. So honestly, a fairly decent top six. Nothing to ride home about, but you're not... This is, you can contend, you, or not, maybe not contend, but you, you, you're, you'll you be comfortable having this as your top six for sure. So, obviously, Edge Oilers. We're almost done, four teams left, Vegas Golden Knights, even though there might be some Vegas fans, and I know the Vegas Golden Knights just won uh, the Stanley Cup, but they didn't win it throughout their top six. They, they won it throughout their top freaking, they've got like three second lines is, is, or the, yeah that's exactly what or they've got like four second lines that, that's how that that's how they are like I, i'm taking the Oilers top six and uh you know some people say oh you're just salty oh no like I'm, honestly it's like you look at what the Oilers top six was able to do against them um it wasn't it wasn't the top six like the Oilers. it was the the bottom six for freaking la or for um vegas just destroyed every team it was the, the best third line in all of hockey and fourth line like they just crushed it so Brett Howden, like Brett Howden, uh, Ivan Barbashev, yeah, he, like those are good guys. Um, Chandler Stevenson, Mark Stone, Mark Stone, I think is just severely underrated, and I'm so happy he's Canadian. And if we ever get to see uh, a team, you know, the Olympics best on best tournament, I'm sure, surely would I'd, I'd have Mark Stone as like a third line center, like just a defensive prowess. So just he's so good, man, and I, I really seen it this year's playoffs. So that was so sweet. Um, slight edge though, I'm giving it to Edmonton. Next up, this, okay, Washington Capitals. This would be so good if it was like five years ago. Obviously, Ovi is on the decline. Same with Kuznetsov, same with uh, TJ Oshie and Backstrom and Pacioretty, right? They've got, no, the youngest guy I think is Tom Wilson and he's like 27, 28. So yeah, I mean, I just had to bring them. I, I wanted to include this one because I was like, man, could you imagine if all these guys were in their prime? This would be just unreal. It would just be insane. People forget how good Max Pacioretty was, like, it, he was unbelievable. So yeah, slight edge or no huge edge. The Oilers probably have to talk about the Canadian teams here. Uh, we're going we're going to be talking about Winnipeg Jets. Uh, Mark Shifley, Kyle Connor, Nik Nikolai Ehlers. 
great first line. It's pretty top heavy though, because if you can see the Vladislav Nemestikov second line center, yikes, that's that's not great. You know, obviously that was where Dubois was. Cole Perfetti, is he ready to take that next step? We'll find out next year. And then uh, newly acquired uh, Gabriel Velarde um, from the LA Kings. So it's not bad. I'm taking the Oilers over theirs, but this isn't a bad top six. It really isn't, but who knows? Shifley might be gone. Uh, yeah, well, time will tell. Okay, last up, not least. We got the Pittsburgh Penguins. You got Crosby. You got Ricard Raquel, Jake Kensel. Ricard Raquel hasn't quite panned out. Uh, you got Brian Rust, who's always going to be, you know, a really good role guy. Malkin, uh, just a stud. And Riley Smith. I'm really excited to see what he does. I'm taking the slight edge. I'm taking the slight, or, pff, slight edge. It, it's a pretty big edge. The Oilers got this one for sure. Um, I think that's a good playoff top six, though, with uh, Crosby and Malkin. You know, they know how to win, so I think that's a good playoff top six, but. Uh, it's definitely going to win you some games. It's probably just outside of top 10 for me, but it's still a good top six. So those are, those are, that's my opinion on some of the best top six in the NHL. Um, did I miss a team? Did do you want me to cover your team? Uh, let me know. I'll, I'll do a video like this again. I was going to rank all teams top six and that's what I originally did, but I was like, this is a 40 minute video and I, I still even cut it down just barely to 27 minutes. It's still a pretty long video. So if you made it this far, guys, I just want to say thank you. Uh, yeah, I got a pretty cool video uh, coming out Sunday. Worked, I've worked so long and hard on this video, so be sure to check in for that one. It's uh, it's it's gonna be so sweet. It's a really really good video. It's not like this. Like I, spent, it's like an educational video. You're gonna learn a lot from it, and um, yeah, it's it might be controversial, so you want to stay to that for sure. Um, thanks for yeah, thanks for making it this far, guys. Feel free to drop a like, uh, drop a comment. Who who has the best top six in the NHL right now? Is it the Oilers? Is it Toronto? Is it uh, Colorado? Maybe. Do you still think Boston has it? Let me know. I'd love to hear it. That's all I got. Take her easy. Don't be average when you can be above average. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.